Are you one of those people who always complain about Valve not releasing Portal 3? Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Well, stick around and see if I can help you out. After playing Portal 1 and 2, I was really wanting more Portal. There's just nothing else that comes close to the environmental puzzle solving combined with the stories of the Portal series. After releasing my other two videos on the Portal series, a few people told me about Portal Stories Mel and how it's basically another Portal game. After doing some research, I discovered that it's a community-made game released in 2015 set in the Portal universe in between the time period of Portal 1 and 2. I've never played a community or fan project game before, but this game has a ton of praise, and since this is probably as close as we're gonna get to Portal 3 for the time being, now is as good a time as any to give it a shot. Upon starting the game, oh my god, how is this not an official Portal game? How's this, Squidward? It's beautiful! I just wanted to explore the world the second I was placed into the game. The year is 1952, right when Aperture Labs was first being built. You play as Mel, and Cave Johnson explains that Aperture is building the test chambers and you'll take part in a smaller scale test called the Short Term Relaxation Vault. You'll be participating in one of our smaller tests, the Aperture Science Innovator's Short-Term Relaxation Vault. After a cutscene where you're placed into the sleep chamber, yes, this game has cutscenes, no big deal, just an unofficial Portal game, you wake up to find Aperture destroyed, similarly to Portal 2, with everything being abandoned. Cave Johnson's voice changed too, yet he keeps telling you that everything is normal. There was a slight problem with the test. Don't worry though, we got you out okay. Nothing's different. Nothing's changed. I won't spoil the story, but I had so many questions like, is this really Cave Johnson? What's happening? Why am I here? Who am I? One of these questions gets answered early on, but that only leads to more questions. The game even adds a few new characters, one of which is a new core named Virgil, who's by your side throughout the game similarly to Wheatley. I grew to like him more and more as the game went on because of how helpful and genuinely nice he is. Don't expect this to get any easier now. Keep going. There's an easy test track up ahead. Maybe you can gain some ground on it. The game is made up of five chapters, with each chapter revealing something new that kept building my anticipation for what would happen next. Whoa! Depending on your proficiency at the puzzles, the game can last anywhere from 6 to 10 hours. After the game sets up the story, you start solving puzzles with your newly acquired portal gun. The puzzles start out feeling like the old Aperture Science puzzles from Portal 2, which makes sense because the game takes place during the beginning of Aperture Labs. The puzzles feel just as satisfying as the mainline games, which is great because all I really wanted was more Portal. Later on in the game, the puzzles turn into the classic White Room puzzles, which are just like the Portal puzzles, but much more complex. It has several different environments throughout though, so I never got bored of looking at the same type of scenery. A few of the puzzles were a little unpolished, like this one where I had the right solution of bouncing the box off of the bouncing goo, but it would just get a janky bounce and not work. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine. I had to retry a couple of times to get it to work eventually, but it was still satisfying to solve. There is one new mechanic that's used quite a bit throughout the game, which is this red wall that kills you if you touch it, destroys objects if they touch it, and you can't shoot portals through it similarly to the blue wall. In short, red oh. wall bad. The puzzles overall are quite a bit harder than Portal 1 and 2. They have you think much more globally. You might think you're done with a big section of the puzzle room only to realize that you had to bring the box with you the whole time or needed to put goo on a part of the environment you didn't expect. No! God, please, no! I liked this challenge though. It made me think about the entire environment as opposed to just a small area. Portal 1 and 2 did this as well, but on a smaller scale. The game is harder than both Portal 1 and 2, but that's to be expected, since this game is for fans who want more Portal like me. The developers assume that whoever is seeking out a fan-made Portal game already has a solid understanding of how Portal's mechanics and puzzles work. The game does give you two difficulty options though, Story Mode and Advanced. I played on story mode because I really just wanted to experience the story, world, and solve some complex puzzles along the way. 
Advanced was actually how the game was first designed to be played, which makes some of the puzzles harder. If you're like me and play Portal for the story and world and don't want to get stuck on a puzzle for an extremely long time, then I'd recommend Story Mode. Keep in mind that even on Story Mode, this is the hardest Portal game yet. However, if you like Portal for the challenging think outside the box puzzles, I'd go for Advanced Mode to put your puzzle skills to the test. Either way, Portal Stories Mel has the most difficult, which also makes for the most satisfying puzzles in the series. They expand on the puzzles from both Portal 1 and 2 to create a uniquely challenging experience. If I had no knowledge of this game, I would have believed that this was Portal 3. The plot is on par with the other Portal games. Things that Virgil would say kept me thinking about questions I had from earlier. I think we'll be in the clear for a little bit, but somehow I can't get access to the final target, or even learn what it is. I was driven by the desire to find answers. My advice is to go into this game as blind as possible, which is why I'm not spoiling anything here. The one thing that didn't match the same level of quality was the humor. I missed the sarcastic one-liners from GLaDOS. I invited your best friend companion King. Of course, he couldn't come because you murdered him. All your other friends couldn't come either because you don't have any other friends because of how unlikable you are. And the aloof yet confident comments from Wheatley. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch Ow. I am not dead. I'm not dead. Some of the jokes were decent, but there wasn't anything on the same level as the other Portal games. Huh. Did you know you can increase the size of your core in just two easy steps? Part of it could be that because I spent more time on the puzzles, the jokes felt less frequent. But either way, that was a key aspect from the Portal series that was a little lacking here. The game doesn't stop with the gameplay and story though. The soundtrack is once again on the same level as the actual Portal games. I might have even enjoyed it a bit more. There's this haunted aura that's woven through some of the tracks that matches up with the decay and mystery of Aperture Labs. I'm not gonna spoil the ending, but I'll just say that the entire final level was my favorite part of the whole game. I loved the setting, level design, and the ending. The story wrapped up perfectly while still leaving certain things open to interpretation, and I think it's my favorite ending out of all the Portal games. I liked the overall plot of the other two games better, but this wrapped everything up so nicely and with such fan service that I couldn't help but love it. If you've always wanted Portal 3, this is as close as you're gonna get for the time being. I barely noticed anything that stood out to make this seem like a fan-made game. The story, puzzles, setting, and ending are all on par with the main games in the series. Sure, there could have been improvements in the jokes department, but the GOAT of Portal soundtracks and everything else I said earlier makes up for it. I enjoyed the new characters added, with Virgil sitting alongside Wheatley as a top-notch character with a distinct personality. I don't think any character will ever replace GLaDOS, though. This game is a must-play for anyone who even remotely likes puzzle games. You can get it for free, so there's really no reason not to play it. If you have a negative bias against fan-made games, don't even worry about it. I have similar hesitations, which is why this is my first time playing a modded fan-made game. I'm not a virgin anymore! I just assume they'll be of lesser quality since they're unofficial. However, the developers who put their care into this game clearly proved me wrong and I'm very glad they did, because Portal Stories Mel is Portal 3 in my eyes. I want to thank everyone that subscribed to my channel, because I just recently hit 100 subs and that was one of my big goals when I first started YouTube. I'll have my other two videos that cover Portal 1 and Portal 2 linked down below. Let me know what your favorite Portal game is down in the comments and if you've ever played a fan-made game before. 
Thanks for watching and if you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future.